Aloha, I'm Matt Dentone with your UH Sports Insider. This is Sidelines with Matty D. Hey there, I'm Matty D. And today we're on the sidelines with Rainbow Wahine, sophomore swimmer, Jasmine Akalgi. Thanks for spending some time out of the water with us today, Jasmine. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me here. All right, Jasmine. We all know you're an accomplished student athlete here at UH, but this summer, you got to experience a meet that very few people get to, the Olympics. Tell us what it was like representing your homeland, the Philippines, in London. Well, at first, I was very honored to represent the Philippines in the Olympics. Not a lot of athletes can be able to go to the Olympics, so the fact that I went there is pretty, like, I feel very accomplished and very happy about it. So, yeah. You made your UH Ohana very proud. Yay. <laughs> What was it like being the only female swimmer from the Philippines competing at the Olympics in London? Well, it doesn't really feel like I was the only female swimmer just because I was always surrounded by a lot of athletes and swimmers like so um, just like knowing that I was the only female swimmer I guess that's um, a pretty big honor to be representing the country and to be the only female one representing it so yeah. You're in a city surrounded by the world's best athletes. Usain Bolt, Kobe Bryant, just to name a couple. Who is the coolest person that you met when you were in London? Well, aside from meeting um, the best swimmers in the world, like Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte, I guess meeting some of the basketball players like Kevin Durant and LeBron James was pretty amazing, but the highlight was meeting Russell Brand. <laughs> you got me jealous over here. Yeah, it was unexpected. I just saw him and just like ran up to him. I told him I love him and he's so amazing. And then I almost fainted after I met him. So it's like the, the highlight of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> During the opening ceremonies at the Olympics, a lot of their nations had their athletes wear some pretty outrageous clothing. What did the Philippines have you guys wear? Well, we didn't really wear anything outrageous. We just wore um, the native shirt. It's called the Barong Tagalog. And this triangle hat, which is gold. But that was pretty much it. It wasn't too crazy, but yeah. <laughs> sounds like you guys look pretty sharp out there. <laughs> kind of, I guess. Yeah, it's the Olympics, so I guess we have to dress up, yeah. I know we're talking about a long time in the future here, but do you have aspirations to swim at the 2016 Olympics in Rio? Well, it's kind of a long time from now, but um, who knows, maybe. I, I can't really say, but like, of course I want to, but we'll see how it turns out like four, three, four years from now. Mm -hmm. Growing up with an island lifestyle, did that influence your decision to go to UH at all? It kind of did, but I didn't really grow up like near the beaches. I grew up in the city, so it wasn't as pretty. It wasn't as beautiful as Hawaii, but I would say the weather was kind of the same. So and it's closer to home. So that's like a big part of me moving here too. So, yeah. All right, Jasmine, last question here. I'd like you to finish my sentence. I, Jasmine, will feel accomplished after the 2012-2013 swim season if... The Rainbow Wahine do good in our new conference this year, and we hopefully can make the NCs, I guess, yeah. That's a good answer, as good as any. Jasmine, thank you <laughs> so much for spending time with us today. You're it's welcome. been a pleasure. You're welcome. Reporting from the Duke Hanamoku Swim Complex, I'm Matt Dentone, and we'll see you next time on Sidelines with Matty D. Thank <laughs> you.